Hello everyone and welcome back to another video or welcome if you are new. Today we are doing a review of our car. We're doing it in the car. Yeah. Because it felt appropriate. So we are reviewing the ID3. Oh, we're going to put the sunroof in. We'll put it back up. It is very, very hot today. So that is why the sunroof is. Yeah. So we're going to go through the good points, bad points. We have had this car for a year and nearly a half. Right? No, just, just, just over a year. We got it in like April last year. All right, okay. We, full disclosure, we do not own this car. We have this car through a company called... Elmo. Elmo. Uh, I always get mixed up with which one it is. Elmo is a, basically it's an electric car fleet. Subscription. And it's a subscription service. So we pay for this car on a monthly basis and it is their car. We don't own it at any point and we send it back when we want to with a month's notice. It is an excellent, excellent service. They are a great company, would highly recommend. Yeah. We'll leave the link below. So... We didn't get to choose things about the car, which I feel like is an important point to make yeah. because there's certain things I think we would have chosen different. Like Jack doesn't like the fact that we have uh, we don't have alloys. We just have mm -hmm. hubcaps, things like that. And this is an older model. What's the plate? It's 21 plate. So this is the Family Pro. It's the uh, Family Pro Performance. Yeah, which doesn't exist anymore. There are different models now, but it is basically equivalent to the... Life Pro. It's the top model, right? Yeah. This is the top yeah. model, and it's basically equivalent to the new top model, and I don't think it has anything new, the new ones, no, right? No, it doesn't, no. Just, just I think it's got tweaks, but Yeah, and we still get the software updates, everything like in the car is still completely up to date. Yeah. So we thought we'd go through the bad points first, get them out of the way, because I'm sure that's what people are actually here for, to hear about the bad points of the car, and then we'll go through the good points after. We've talked through it, and we're not going to talk through just the features of the car, because you were bringing that up, weren't you? Yeah. Saying you really love the heated yeah. steering wheel, you love the heated mirrors, but you guys can see the features of the car in an article. So we're just going to go through the bad points and good points of the things in the car that we like. Also want to quickly point out, we are just average car people. We are not here to be like a car channel, being like it has this, it has this, it has this. We are here to give an average car owner's perspective, correct? Yep. Awesome, let's go. So bad points first. First one is the one that we complain about the most, and it's the suspension of the car. We aren't entirely sure whether there's something wrong with this car, because everything we look at says the suspension of this car is excellent. We do not agree. For reference, the car we had before this was a Seat Arona, so that's an SUV. So that's probably going to have really good suspension, right? Yeah, yeah. So it might just be that this is a first small car that we've had in a while, so yeah. it doesn't feel good. Yeah, I mean, we had a, um, I, I had a, a Vauxhall Astra before that, which is probably more similar type of car, but even then the suspension was better in that. And yeah. I, uh, it, it, the things we notice the most, and it's it's just because we go that way. So when we go up to like rural Northumberland, there's a particular road that we travel all the time that is really bumpy. bumpy and, yeah, but like, it's rural Northumberland. Yeah. It is bumpy. So that's kind of where we notice it the most. I think it, it kind of, every time we, we drive up there, um, it, it reminds us, doesn't it? That yeah, and it's not right. like potholes. It's literally just a bumpy road. We feel every bit of it. So the suspension isn't great. It's not horrific. It doesn't feel hard. We were saying we don't know if the suspension's too good that it's just making it an unpleasant journey, yeah. right? We were talking yeah. about that, weren't yeah. we? Because we don't know if maybe it's too bouncy, so it's just making you be like, ugh. Like, it makes you feel sick. So give it... Definitely have a look at the suspension if you do a test drive because we don't we don't like it on this car. Yeah, the infa infotainment system is quite buggy, so that's kind of the, the console um, that does everything. In cars like a Tesla, it does like it controls absolutely everything. It's kind of quite similar in this where you've got your, your your vehicle controls within here as well. It tells you about your charge and allows you to start and stop charging. Um, it does all your usual stuff, your maps, your radio, your music, stuff like that. It's also got CarPlay, CarPlay. and things like that as well, and um, Google CarPlay, whatever that's called, I don't know what it's called. It's just a bit buggy, like when you first start the start the car, start the engine, it still kind of calls it start the engine. It sometimes takes a while for even things like the aircon to yeah. kick in, you know, there'll be a message that says the aircon's not available right now, and you've got to wait, you know, a good minute, a minute or so before it, it kicks in. And a lot of the time you've got to drive before it kicks in as well, yeah. so if you want to start something before you're driving you can't yeah, you've yeah. got to wait until you're driving which on on really cool days in the in the winter um or really hot days in the summer it, it makes a difference because you yeah. you get in the car and i mean it's it's kind of dark interior in here as well 
and if the sun roof's open like it is now it's red hot in here and you want the cool to be on quite quickly yeah i don't think it's as laggy in terms of like press and stuff it's quite responsive when you when you're yeah. like if i yeah. click that it does it really quickly i know some cars are horrific for stuff like that but it's yeah yeah so the, the actual touchscreen is is good but it's just the software behind it. it's just not yeah that good and i mean if you we you know we we've looked i've looked at articles and things like that and found out that there is a software update that's meant to have been coming for a year and a half now to fix stuff like this and get a you get a brand new interface and loads more functionality it's getting delayed and delayed and delayed yeah which kind of sounds all right if you're looking to get one you think oh it might come along but We've if, had it for a year. if you tend to only have cars for a couple of years and then move on on pcps or anything like that then you might not get that software update in the time you've got the car which yeah. makes a difference Another thing with the infotainment is that also it doesn't remember a lot of your settings, which is awful. So yeah. the, this is a bad point we didn't wrote, right, actually. The lane awareness is horrific in this car, and it's a, a lot of people complain about it, don't they? Yeah. The car will try and move you into another lane if it thinks you're veering, but it doesn't have a good sense of when you're actually veering and it will actually take you the wrong direction so if you're veering in the middle of the road it'll actually swerve you in the middle of the road so we turn that off but it will not save that every time you're in the car you have to turn it off and it's other system it's not only that you have it doesn't remember any settings yeah, really there's, there's like a that's another thing we haven't written down actually there is like another like a, an advanced internal alarm that will like detect in the car that you can turn on oh off. yeah we had issues when we first had the car for the first couple of weeks where overnight, any time, if that setting was turned on, the car alarm would just go off randomly. If I think anything. I think it was trying to detect people out the windows kind of thing. Which but even then, I don't think it did. Like sometimes it like it wouldn't be like, oh, every now and then again, it would go off. It was literally like every time we locked yeah. the car, the alarm would go yeah. off. So we have to turn off internal monitoring every single yeah. time we leave. And I think we kind of forget about it because for like over a year now, we've been manually turning off every yeah, time we get uh -huh. in and out of the car and you just it's become a habit for us but it is annoying it gets annoying <laughs> yeah yeah next up is the cruise control it's iffy it's brilliant and it's adaptive and it is also it's adaptive to stop and start again as well. what it, but what is it with the speeds like it oh knows it's got like it's got like road um i don't road, know it knows the speed limit yeah. for the majority of places it does mess up a lot not a lot so, it does mess up yeah. where it doesn't actually know the correct speed but you can change it which is really good i love that it knows the speed and it'll automatically adjust if you're coming up to a 30 things like that if you're driving at 70 some points on the a1 though it'll just go it's 50 and break the car which isn't great but it's just iffy and also the adaptiveness isn't great like for how close you are to cars it just changes its mind about how far it wants to be because you can choose the car lengths that you want to be away which is excellent we normally sit about two or three but it will three can be completely different if you are braking and i know that is standard but sometimes you feel like the car is not going to brake and then if you touch the brake it slams the brake so it's just a little bit iffy yeah. it you get used to it but it's a bit iffy and what jack was talking about with the adaptive to stop i never i never use i know you sometimes do i never use the adaptive to stop because i don't trust the car i think it doesn't do it quick enough yeah it just does it too slow the entire time and then if you have to brake it will slam the brakes on which is just not good for the car behind you so i never use the stop and the pull away i also find really iffy and really really jolty yeah. I, I use it more often because i don't mind the joltiness um, yeah but I've, I normally have to turn the um, the car what, like lengths away from you, way up, just to get it to behave properly. Another one is that the um, so there's a, there's a projection on the door, um, like the wing mirrors, onto the floor. So when you get out, I don't, light, is it at the wing mirrors? I yeah, thought it's, it's the bottom of the door. No, it's, it's underneath the wing mirror. Right. Um, it kind of looks like the Renault logo, which is a bit weird. Um, but it broke about six months ago and it, it no it was closer when we got it was it yeah it was way closer when we got it it still projects but it's just all splattered like the actual like lens is just gone which and i th i thought it was just dirt or like it'll fix itself but jack's looking into it and it is just broken yeah a lot of people have the issue they say if you go to the garage they'll sort it out for you but it's just it's yeah. another thing that you don't have to deal with yeah oh next up is the frame so i'll pop it over the top so i don't have to send the camera the frame 
is so thick that it is completely in the way. And me and Jack were talking about this the other week and we think it might be because it's an electric and because the battery's in the bottom, so it has to have like a thicker chassis. Yeah. Uh, so if, if what's, you, the, what's it called? The roll cage. Yeah, the roll cage. Yeah. We so think if, it might so have to be thicker. So if you flip it, but the battery's then on top of you, it doesn't Yeah, it doesn't. It but it really gets in the way. It's like, a blind spot. It is 100% a blind spot. Sometimes there'll be, yeah. if you're at a roundabout, I have to be so careful because sometimes a car will literally be in that blind spot the entire time and then it'll just be out in front of me. So the frame is far too thick. Another one is that the seats stain quite easily. So the seats are made up, I don't know if you can see under my arm, seats are made up, it's like a kind of almost what it was, suede. suede type material. Yeah. It's not real suede, but, and then also I like a- I think it might be. I think it's because it's vegan. Oh, right, okay. And then there's this kind of like normal fabric -y. This normal, this suede's actually quite good at not staining, but the fabric. I don't know, look. I can wipe that off though, but the fabric, it just, it's really hard to get off. And it's a bit like a plasticky type fabric, isn't it? Um, yeah. So like we, when we got the car, there was already a few stains on the seats anyway, just f from whatever. But we don't spill anything on the seats. We don't really eat food in the car that's really messy all the time. I was gonna say that's a lie. We eat a lot in the car, but Jack is very, yeah. very, very clean and tidy person. So we're both, very, very kind careful. of careful with but there the just food. seems to be weird just like not, not even like like spot stains like just weird like i think it could even and, be water it could even yeah. be water and it's just it's staining and easily it, it kind of just looks like it's fading as well so yeah. it's, it just, but, they're, they're just not great but i will say i'm going to come on to see some good points though so yeah. yeah next one is probably the second biggest bad point about this car and it is the touch buttons horrific absolutely hate them they are disgusting and i know it's the type of thing where you think that they'll be awesome and you, they look really really fancy and they feel lovely when you are driving they're the worst thing possible because yeah. they are not responsive they don't work and in the dark no idea where they are so in the infotainment system in the what do you call this console in the console the center console on an evening you we yeah. like jack's normally the passenger he cannot control yeah. the so music the temperature the parking yeah. menu the climate this is anything it's better on the on the steering wheel because there's lights behind yeah. the text but on the on the middle bit horrific and, and on a non-driving because there's obviously things on there that are critical to your driving yeah but on a non-driving point as well you know Night times when it gets dark and you're driving somewhere, it often gets cold. So if you want to put the um, heated seats on, uh, you've got to tap the the temperature up, up and, and down, down buttons at the same time. You no idea where they are in the dark. Yeah, you can't see them. And also, people might have already picked up on it, but I have. I have pretty long nails, okay, and that's not uncommon and I should not have to change my nails for my car And a lot of people have long nails. These are a nightmare for me. I, ca I have literally I really really yeah, struggle you've got to thumb them all, don't you? Really? I had to yeah. get onto them and also the ones so they're mainly the ones on the central console the ones on the driving side they just, just do whatever they, they want, yeah, they? they're just not great. They have it's, it's haptic feedback, isn't it? Yeah. Like they're on those the haptic feedback, but it's just really hard to control. They're not good. Yeah. Touch buttons should yeah. not be used. And you want a button to know whether you've actually clicked it or not as well. Yeah. Because I know it has the sounds, which are annoying in itself, by the way. If you've got someone in the car with you who doesn't know the car, like my I, my grandma, I gave her a lift and I pressed one of the buttons and she was literally like, what is going What's on? Going on? Yeah. So that's not great, but you need them because yeah. otherwise you haven't got a clue when you've pressed them. It's the same up here. These The lights that come on up here are exactly the same touch buttons. I quite like them though. The, um, the, the, the actual control for the lights like the front lights and the back lights and stuff like that are the same as well where they're touch buttons and they're just i don't mind them as much because they have the light up so the ones yeah. at the front that control the lights when you tap them they'll go orange so i don't mind them I as just, much i just prefer them all to be buttons to be honest would be the ideal mm. for me yeah but i do the central console needs buttons it, yeah. that it's horrific you yeah. can't control it and the last one is this uh, kind of links into the cruise control yeah so that just as i was saying before the brakes are variable and not great sometimes they'll just break harder for you um if you're on oh. cruise control and it's breaking it just it just assumes you don't want to break anymore it's weird we need to talk about how the car drives for you as well because we've forgotten that other people don't have this can you remember when we first caught the car and it started driving for you and we were so confused the driving speeding when it comes to a roundabout and stuff oh, even. Yeah, yeah. So the car, 
it, even when you're not on cruise control it will break for you it knows when there's a roundabout coming it knows when there's a 30 coming it knows when there's a car in front of you even if you're not on cruise control it will do it for you and that's not on the brake mode because there's a brake mode as well yeah. which breaks automatically but it but it doesn't quite fully do it for you it just yeah. starts to do it for you i think it's yeah. it's to try and give you some like some kind of guidance just to say you know you should be braking and i think but... it's to try and mimic gears but it yeah. doesn't work yeah. correctly yeah. so going back to the point when it's braking for you if you brake it'll whack the brakes on sometimes yeah. but then sometimes it'll be as if you've not even touched the brake it's just you really you really can't dictate how the brake's gonna go so yeah. you end i end up slamming the brakes on a lot more yeah. because i'd rather it break quickly than not break at all and then end up in the car but sometimes i feel like the car is literally not going to stop yeah it's a very odd brake it's very odd right now on to the good points there are quite a few good points we'll try and get through them but i just want to say as well because obviously there was a lot of bad points we've been very negative we still have this car these are not bad points in yeah. the way of being like this car is horrific do not buy it we still have this car and it's the best electric car for the price yeah I mean, currently we've, we've looked as well at changing the car and oh, there's just yeah. nothing mm -hmm. quite gets to this yeah um, it's still an excellent it car it's just i wanted to highlight that because obviously there was a lot of bad points but we still choose this car yeah, but anyway yeah. good points so you start because that's a you point it's a nice size so i um, disagree <laughs> it, uh, in terms of so the 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 size inside is quite nice it's where lovely you've got so loads of room spacious. there's it's not lovely. really uh, i don't know how many photos you want to have I but love there's, it. there's not really a massive block here like some cars you'll have like yeah. it come all the way up to here love it there's not these these go on top of these in a second these, yeah. these go all the way back and so it's literally down there it's just all gaped um you also it doesn't connect the, the central bit doesn't connect to the bottom of the car so you've got loads of room i love it but my main point about this was the length of the car so because you don't have a massive engine out the front i think volkswagen have taken advantage of that and they've actually shortened the bonnet so from the bottom of the window to the front of the car is quite short so when you're doing things like um kind of what you call them? not three point turns anymore turn the road when, you, when you're doing a turn on the road it's you've got more room parking spaces as well you've got a lot more room to be able to you know get in the boot and stuff like that and and maneuver around it so I, I quite like that as well. I agree actually, you know, I wouldn't I wasn't thinking about the front. The front of the car is a really nice size. Like you can do a turn in the road so much easier. And I always think that I'm gonna smash into something and I never do. And those parking sensors are great because they're at the front as well. The seats are comfortable. These seats are lovely. And I know we've just complained about the staying in them. I'm alright with it. I love these seats. Like they are the, the comfiest seats we've had because they're like ergonomic. They come round at the sides and they come round at the bottom as well. They are comfortable seats. They're not particularly cushioned. I feel like, if anything, they're probably less cushioned than the Arona was. Because I, I feel like I get a number on long journeys more yeah. than usual. Also, the material on them, beautiful. I am autistic. I am very, very picky about materials. These are beautiful. The suede is stunning. And the I don't particularly like the sewn bit, but it's not, it's not horrific. That's good. Yeah, uh -huh. but it's not, it's not, the suede bit is where I can feel, and that's what matters for me. Yeah, adjustable armrests are quite good as well. Talk about the seats. So these um, come all the way up, all the way back as well. Yeah. And they're completely adjustable, so you can actually stop them so at any good. point. So that's now solid there. Oh, I'm not going to be able to see very well, go but all still. The way down. Yeah. If they're very like they have like literally like centimeters between the different stops, which is very very good. Yeah. And they're comfy. Yeah. I love them. When Jack puts them up, but like when you're in the central bit, yeah. and then I've, you, I get in and it's not down, I'm literally like, oh, because yeah. <laughs> I and, use them so much. They are quite tight to your, to your seat because they come off the side of your seat. And I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm bigger than you are. When I'm in the car, like if you move your arm, I, I will kind of pop a stretch over to the other side and oh, then do you? relax oh, a bit more on this one. That. So that, that, you know, whichever yeah. one you use, they are comfortable. No, that's a really good point. The design of the dash is all, um, really nice um like, i wanted the, the white one yeah you wanted the white one but yeah, the white one's beautiful as we say we didn't get a choice <laughs> with it so that the, the you know the shape of the um information in inform infotainment. infotainment system is nice we've also got this id light at the front um oh, yeah um, which i don't know if we'll be able to get a photo or anything up of but it's quite nice i, I think i understand how to use it now a bit more um, i do not if you're using things like the maps built in the car or apple maps then you've got apple it, maps doesn't Apple Maps does. Oh yeah, because I does. use Google Maps. Yeah, Google, yeah. Google Maps doesn't. Um, and your route's there, but you're not indicating to like go left or right. It'll actually start flashing across the 
light against the front to which say which very, way very you should cool. be going. Um, it also does things like um, if you need to brake hard, it'll flash red. Oh yeah, that's when true. When you're the emergency brake. charging the car, it'll actually show you a progress, progress which oh. is really nice. And it also flashes in front of the driver when there's anything that pops up that it thinks needs to change. That's a bit off. Sometimes I, I, I think, think I figured it out now. I think I, I think it's it a bit is. weird, but yeah, and the LEDs are lovely. Yeah. They're so good. They kind of go all the way along the doors and stuff as well to match the colour. And you and can choose. Like the, yeah. uh, honestly, the LEDs really are good. amazing. Really good. Nice steering wheel. Delightful. This obviously is going to depend on which one you get because this is a leather steering wheel and the lower models have plastic, plastic steering wheels. But the leather one is delightful. It is so soft. Really, really nice yeah. design and the heated part of it is quite nice. It's only on like certain bits, but it's still well, it's, really nice. And it's hot. It is hot. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah that is. Yeah, really the, hot. the heated seats actually aren't the best that they could be. They don't get as hot and they go off automatically. Yeah, which our old one did as well, but it got hotter. It got hotter, yeah. Which was uh -huh. the better thing, yeah. It's good storage. I think there's, there's this kind of tray in the middle. This tray in the middle is really good. It's got loads of room for storage. It's got a divider as well, so you can you can break things up. And charging in it. And charging in it, yeah. Uh, behind the seats, um, which I know is quite common in cars, but some cars don't have it, is there's like ducats for... Did you know I only found that out today when I was cleaning the car? <laughs> I only knew that today. Yeah. I, I assumed, because a lot of cars yeah. have them, but there's like three yeah, storage there's like, pockets. there's like little pockets at the top as well and Why stuff like that. Why didn't I know that? I don't know. Why have haven't we used that more? We said it all clean. Yeah, I know. I honestly, I forgot to say it to you. I had Just no idea that. until today. And they look good as well. They don't look like the material ones that look a little bit like like the mesh ones. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. they like blend into the car seat, which is yeah. really really nice. The um, ducats. Ducats and the doors are quite deep and quite big. That little yeah, part there's, like, there's like there's like a little netted lovely. part at the front, which is great. There's loads of room in the glove compartment as well. Under the boot is quite a deep space um, as well, and that's completely adjustable, like the floor of the boot. Yeah. Um, we have a Cocker Spaniel, and our Cocker Spaniel fits in there fine. Yeah, he normally goes in the back, but if he fits yeah, in there absolutely fine. Cup holders as well are really good because they, they do bigger right. things, like our water bottles are quite big and they fit there in there perfectly. Yeah, um, really, really good storage. Really good, so yeah, it's great. Uh, oh, there's this little ducket as well um, that holds your phone yeah. and charges your phone. There's also just like a little, I don't know what you call it. I don't know what a, it's for. Just a place for like additional things. The car's decided it wants to turn yeah. off. After about 20 minutes and you're sitting in the car, it kind of just goes, I want to turn off But there's a, bu there's a button that you can turn it back on with. Hold the button. No, I don't know. I don't normally. No, you don't. Okay. But we... <laughs> We didn't know there was a button there until about three months ago. Yeah. We were pressing the brake to turn the car on. Anyway. Yeah. Now the power of the car is quite good uh, for the, the I'm talking about price of cars now, but for the price of car it is quite good. Um, yeah. I love pulling up to a next to a petrol car. Yeah. It, at it, a traffic light and when it goes it green and I right. just freaking go. It's delightful. Because yeah. we, we test drove a lot of cars. We test drove like big Audis, the Q4. Uh, we test drove the Volvo, which we still really want. Um, yeah, we do want the Volvo. And they're really, really powerful, but this it doesn't quite get up to that that mark, but it gets there. It, it's oh, a lot, it's incredible. A lot I've more never, than... apart from when it's on a low charge, because when it's when it doesn't have, the I don't know when power. it goes down. When it's on like fifty mile, it'll pull you down, so yeah. you can't get the full pull away. Yeah. That's the only the ever time I've had issue with like pulling away when I yeah. need to. But it's great. But yeah. yeah. Last one is the rear camera. So the reversing camera is freaking brilliant on this car. I've said this to Jack, I'm gonna be good when we lose this camera because it's insane. The rear, so the reversing camera, the quality, uh, you can't beat it. It's literally just like a camera. It's insane. It's it's not blurry in the slightest. It is actually hidden in the VW logo as well. So it actually pops out, which means it doesn't get dirty, which is delightful because it's always clean. And there is also a panoramic camera. Panoramic? A bit like a fisheye lens. Yeah, fisheye lens. There's a fisheye lens for seeing if anything's coming. I love that. If, that, if our next car doesn't have that camera, I'm going to be lost because it is insane. It is yeah. so freaking good. And you can change everything else as well. Um, I don't know if it's going to let us do it. But you can change everything else in terms of like the brightness, the contrast and stuff. Oh yeah, well. of the All camera. Of yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. So if, it, if it's gone like a little bit blurry, like dirty, you can just chuck the contrast up and it'll still be good. Honestly, the camera yeah. is incredible. It's great. So that is all of our points for it. The only thing I will end on is definitely look into Elmo and 
what did you just say it was called? On, on two, two is the other one that does electric cars. Yeah. Incredible, include your insurance as long as you're over the correct age for the certain car. This one was an over 25 car. Yeah, I think I think the lowest band is over 25, the next band up is over 30. Yeah, um, so if you're over 25 and looking for an electric car, yeah. look into them because if we wanted this car at the time we were looking to get it, it was going to be a year and a half wait. Then when we decided to get the car, we had it within yeah. two weeks. So it is excellent. But as Sarah said, it includes insurance, it includes uh, tax as well, which at the minute is zero, but they have said it'll include the tax going forward. It also includes maintenance as well, so if you need yeah. you know, anything changed, anything done, they'll cover the cost of that. And if well. it's due for its service, they sort it yeah. and things like that. Yeah, so so it is excellent. We the had, only thing... Sorry, go on. I was going to say, we've had it in for service and we had a courtesy car as well, yeah. sorted by so them, which was great. It yeah. wasn't electric, but still, it was great. Yeah. The only thing that's not included is, is fuel, so it is literally... Um, but on two, it does include. With on two, it does, but I think now you've got to pay an extra for on two. Oh, right. Okay. There is like a base package that doesn't have it, but you can right. add it. Anyway, just look into them. That's what we're saying. Yeah. But anyway, that is going to be it. We're happy to answer any questions. Like we say, we're not experts in car, so I'm sorry if this didn't include what you need it to, but hopefully this helps people who are just looking for it for the next yeah. car. We really would recommend this. It's not the best. There are a lot of issues, like the the brick and the touch screen and the touch is very very annoying but this is i think we would agree for the price range that it is in this is the best electric car you can get yeah so that's going to be it thank you for being on the video if you did find this video useful please make sure to like it subscribe if you're new hello i'm sarah this is jack my partner and we have a dog called oakley and comment if you have any questions anyway even if you don't do all that, thank you so much for watching and I shall hopefully see you in another video. Bye. Bye.